I'm not aware of, I, I don't know if any, anybody else is, I'm not aware of any uh, um, research that I've seen that really goes to the providers to ask them these kinds of questions. I did think it was interesting um, that um, in uh, a significant minority of communities indicated that there were planned change efforts um, you know, going on uh, among congregations in their communities. Um, so to you know, to, to sort of continue with this theme of of uh, you know, a paradox to some extent, um, I can just you know suggest my my own uh, reading of some of this data is that um, certainly on the central agency side, there's a lot of activity. I mean, virtually every one of the Activities that we suggested, with a few, with a few exceptions, um, virtually all of the activities, a majority of the responding agencies said yes. Uh, we're we we've been doing that. We've been uh, you know we've been quite active, and yet on the other hand, as I think a couple of you have uh, you know have taken note of, uh, it 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 seems that there are a set of. Um, you know, uh, uh, challenges uh, built into the field in a certain sense that are proving very difficult to uh, to deal with. And I, I wonder, Steve, if, if uh, do you have that uh, sheet in which you took the uh, the sort of free responses uh, to the last question when we asked people sort of what hasn't changed in their communities? Yeah. Here it is. So just, you know, uh, take it. I don't know that you've had a chance, that people have had a chance to see this. So this is a little, you know, a little longer of a read. But these were responses that I think came in from, what, 16 out of the communities or something, 16 of the um, respondents. Take a minute to read them. I'd be very interested in in you know in hearing from all of you on the call. I, I mean, one way of reading this, you know, is that this is a kind of best of times, worst of times uh, scenario. Um, I mean, we've seen research published uh, recently uh, from you know from the, the group that worked with Jack Wertheimer and others that would seem to indicate that, that there's um, you know that there's actually uh, some good work going on out there in the field. Um, we know that there are uh, uh, quite a few initiatives that are underway uh, in in communities, both uh, you know, large and not so large, that are in uh, more or less uh, systematic ways trying to improve complementary ed. Um, and on the other hand, if I'm reading this right, um, there's a sense that. You know, uh, boy, there's an awful lot that that 
that doesn't change, that hasn't changed. We don't have, we're not reporting the same kind of turnover. Now that may change as this cohort gets older as it is going to in public education, but at the moment at least we're looking at the administrative stability. And we're also looking at um, a series of disconnected but nevertheless well-intentioned experiments in change, whether at the organizational level or at the curricular level, curricular meaning both formal and informal. Those two things seem to be going on. Um, uh, at the same time, the persistent issues are enrol shrinking enrollments, um, lack of clarity and vision of goal, uh, an articulation of goals and, and vision, um, uh, uh, retention or lack of retention, um, etc., uh, which are seem to be very persistent issues uh, throughout. So it's just an interesting description of what is. Ed, you want to try Ed did you want to continue? Well, yeah, I mean, I think I was saying the same thing in different words. Uh, I think that uh, in some of this discussion and the characterization, we're mixing outputs with outcomes. You know, the best of times you described was a whole lot of activity, which Danny was, you know, describing as these experiments. Um, but in terms of outcomes, um, Whatever, however, you know, there may be a lack of clarity of the goals, but in terms of increased engagement, educational achievement, you know, whatever the, the outcome might be, uh, that's a little less clear. Uh, I have a comment, this is Gil, that runs uh, to the question uh, that you've raised here, John, as well as to the part three that you mentioned of implications, perhaps, for the WOW project. Uh, one of the most popular programs in North America is Birthright. Uh, it's just great, a 10-day trip to Israel, positive experience. You invest a few thousand dollars per uh, collegiate, and lo and behold, they'll have a positive Jewish feeling, they'll be engaged, they'll love Israel, and that's just great. That's uh, a low level of investment investment on, on the learner's part, 10 days of a nice trip abroad, and a low level of financial investment, and presto change you've accomplished the desired outcome. Uh, similarly, <laughs> these initiatives, uh, and w they abound, and perhaps one message we need to, uh, you know, transmit is that the supplementary school is not same old, same old. There's much change, there's innovation, there's experimentation, there's family involvement, there's experiential learning, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and all of these things aim to minimize the investment of time and maximize that very good feeling and positive identity about uh, being a, a part of Jewish life in some way. So they tend to be uh, engaging the family in holiday celebration, in synagogue ritual around uh, Shabbat and, and other occasions, and these two-week camps that Alan Edelman was talking about, you know, because that's much more pleasant an experience than a few hours per week in a classroom. So those things uh, have a couple of dimensions. One of them is it's very Protestant because it's all faith-based. Judaism is about the synagogue. It's about ritual celebrations. I mean, whatever the the uh, you know halachic or non-halachic nature of the ritual, it's it's religious life. It's not uh, dealing with how this relates to me on a broader basis than what is customarily associated in America with the religious sphere, 